With days to go before the UK general election, here's our special. And the question we're asking is, can the UK oil and gas industry avoid disaster? So let's take a look at the profitable companies in 2023. When was the last time you heard people going, oh, those bloody oil and gas companies, they're making money hand over fist. Well, let's have a look at uh, three companies here, Harbour Energy, Celtic Football Club and Marks and Spencers. Who are Harbour Energy? Many people uh, not involved in the industry might ask. They are the largest producers of oil and gas throughout the UK continental shelf. Let's have a look at the profits that these companies made. Well, there you go. Harbour Energy only made about £25 Celtic, they made £40 million profit. And Marks & Spencers, £365. Now, which of these three companies do you think pays a windfall tax? Yes, the oil and gas company. Now, the day that Labour announced their plans to increase and extend the energy profits levy, the EPL, on the very day Deltic, Serica and Harbour, all their shares went down. It wasn't met very, very enthusiastically by the markets. Who are these companies? Well, these are the companies you've never heard of. They're not the the high street names, that's for sure. And this is a a list, a league table of the upstream independents, and it's from Deloitte. Companies like Harbour Energy, Ithaca Energy, Serica Energy, Enquest, these are the the major players in the North Sea, the major producers. Most people haven't heard of them. We'll come back on the the names of the companies that people have heard. So let's have a look at the Labour Party and Sir Keir Starmer. He's saying no new licences to oil and gas firms in a bid to ensure a phased and responsible transition in the North Sea. Well... We'll have a look and see how significant the North Sea and the UK is in terms of global production. Don't hold your breath. Now, removing uh, tax incentives, that's the reinvestments under the windfall tax or the EPL, they're proposing to extend the, the profits levy beyond 2029. By 2029, there'll be hardly much of a UK oil industry left at this rate. They want to create Great British Energy, a publicly owned energy company. Now, Sir Keir's confirmed that the company won't actually produce any energy, quite what it will do. I'm not too sure the Labour Party's got ambitious plans for uh, offshore wind, for carbon capture, utilisation and storage, and of course, hydrogen. All of the uh, crackpot ideas will be funded and waste taxpayer money. Now, I'm not saying all offshore wind is uh, is a crackpot idea, nor, nor some of these others, but it's uh, basically private investment that actually dictates if projects are worthwhile, if they're likely to be uh, profitable, if they're likely to wash the face. Government's notoriously not very good at this sort of thing. The Labour Party manifesto, well, we'll see it on the next slide, it's disastrous for jobs, not just in Scotland, but all right across the UK. The balance of payments will be hit, income tax will plummet, we'll have a higher carbon footprint from imposing oil and gas to satisfy UK demand. The North Sea, quite frankly, is uninvestable for oil and gas companies at present. Many of the same companies that are kind of driving forward carbon capture, geothermal, solar and wind, etc. Probably looking at them and thinking, well, actually, so there's the uh, Labour manifesto. Pause the video if you want to read it. Bits and pieces all over the place in the manifesto, which to my mind sums up the uh, the Labour Party at this time. They should be doing less mudslinging and more substance. I'm allowed to get away with it. You could have great British energy if you supported successful expert private enterprises. The existing companies that are working in the field have got decades of experience, know exactly what they're doing. Instead, looks like it's going to be another layer of bureaucracy, a talking shop, and uh, probably unable to walk the talk. £8.3 million, they're saying, just to spread jobs around. What's the sense in that? The Conservative Party, well, here we go, Rishi Sunak and the Conservative Party's general election manifesto. They have pledges to fast-track next-generation nuclear, put decisions on the next phase of the UK's net-zero transition to a parliamentary vote. Already they've destroyed value for oil and gas companies with its windfall tax, and the example of the profits that uh, Harbour Energy made in 2023, for a size of the, that size of company, it's ludicrous that uh, can only make that amount of profit. They will support new licensing, but the vast majority of in- infrastructure will be long gone before any new field comes on stream. It's not going to be very, very efficient. And in all cases, not just for the Conservative Party, but for whoever forms the new government, um, when, the, when the brownouts and the blackouts occur, governments will fall. I guarantee that.
Now, in higher latitudes, we're more likely to die of hypothermia than global warming when we're sitting around a candle in the middle of winter because there's no gas, there's no oil, there's, there's basically no electricity coming in. We'll see how popular the governments are then. So they need to stop jumping on bandwagon, overreacting to vocal minorities and being influenced by these anarchists, you know, the sort of just stop oil type people who you know, are just out there to disrupt society as far as uh, I can make out. Look at how uh, academia addresses energy. They follow the money. They're less concerned about the fundamental open-minded research these days. They jump onto the, um, the transition bandwagon. And really, if you have a contrary view, it won't get funded, it seems. Only a miracle, it seems, will get the Tories back in power. Well, perhaps we do need a change, but Labour, they're going to kill this industry. Tory detail, pause the video if you want to read that. Here's the OEUK press release, and this is, they're the leading trade body for the, it's the Offshore Energies UK, and they were responding to the launch of the Conservative Party's manifesto. Pause the video to read this, but they're hardly coming out and saying much other than, we'll work with all parties in government and opposition on behalf of our members. Not exactly hard hitting, is it? Well, what about the other political parties? Well, I'm sorry, but I was losing the will to live. Far too much politics for me. They're all going to be minority opposition at best, so they do have views. They're all much of a muchness, not much to, to choose between them in terms of their energy policies. But let's look at those darn oil companies. So Keir Starmer gets it, but he generally confuses the general public. Make oil and gas companies pay fair tax on their massive profits, he says. And he cites companies like BP and Shell. In the case of BP, in 2023, they made £11 billion worth of profits, and that compares not as well with what they managed in 2022. Some of this was due to the uh, soaring commodity prices after the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Looking at uh, Shell, in 2023, they made profits of $28.2 billion US dollars, compared with $39.9 billion in 2022. Let's remember, taxes have been paid overseas on profits. Neither of these companies uh, have anything like the same scale and size of operations in the UK that they used to have. They were at one time the major producers on, in the North Sea. Not anymore. So here's a, an example of a headline. This is uh, from the 28th of March, 2023. Energy giant Shell paid just £15 million in taxes and fees to the UK last year on their drilling, compared to over £6.3 billion to the Norwegian government over the same period. Well, guess what? Shell produce a lot more oil and gas in Norway than they do in the UK. In the UK, they're going through a lot of decommissioning of oil and gas fields, which have already paid corporation tax, supplementary tax, PRT and windfall tax over the years. So there's not really an awful lot to tax within the UK. Great to have these companies as UK companies. I hope we can just hang on to them. So for a bit more detail and understanding of why Shell's UK windfall tax payment is so low, Pause the video and read this article. 40 billion record profits. That's the headline. And they only paid $134 million in tax in the UK. But the UK only accounts for less than 5% of the global revenues. And probably most of that's from downstream. Lots of ab uh, abandonment uh, activities been taking place. Shell have uh, paid taxes over the decades on their offshore fields. But now they've come to the end of their life. They're having to remove them and um, make good the seabed, and that's costing billions. Hence, uh, in 2021, uh, there was actually they, they actually got a, a $54 million tax credit within the UK. They made profits elsewhere in the world, of course. It's Shell and companies like Shell that are investing in offshore wind, in geothermal, in carbon capture, and in solar. That's being driven by the revenues and any profits that they make from their oil and gas side. If the oil and gas side continues to get thumped, then they're probably going to look hard at are these likely to be profit centres in the future? And in some cases, decisions are being made that they're not likely to be. So if you make investments in the UK really onerous and uh, really off-putting, then Shell, they've got many, many countries in the world where they do business and they invest their money. They don't have to keep investing in the UK. 
all companies have that option. Politicians, on the other hand, well, they're only really interested in getting elected, staying in power, getting paid for as long as possible. Uh, There is no long-term strategic thinking in the UK. So what do the Greens say? Well, apparently they believe humanity won't survive. So there's little point voting for them then. Humanity will adapt and survive. Well, what happens in the uh, USA? What happens with US oil companies? They pay low taxes. In fact, oil and gas companies in the UK pay a lot higher tax rate than any other UK business. Amazon, which supplies 30% of the UK retail market, how much do they pay in tax? Perhaps that's where we should be looking to get some windfall revenues from. Now, oil projects, they're decadal. They go on for many, many years. Indigenous US companies thrive and become global super majors. Uh, they're not held back by their, uh, their parent government. Other EU companies are investing heavily in exploration, not necessarily in Europe, but beyond Europe. E&I and Total Energies are, are rarely out of our news videos, and uh, they're exploring all over the world and being successful and growing. Now, competition from NOCs are expanding massively overseas. That's only going to grow as we go forward. Whereas UK politicians, well, they're myopic and they totally lack any imagination. Here's a a good infographic of the global oil companies. And you can see on this football that uh, very few of these companies are actually British companies. Uh, They're not exactly world dominators. There's BP and Shell highlighted, but most of them are NOCs, foreign companies um, that make up most of the international oil and gas production. You couldn't make it up. Again, the OE UK reacts and the rhetoric continues. I think these are from um, Energy Voice. 200,000 people's livelihoods depend on the sector. You can read the headlines or pause the video and, and read some of the feedback. So the UN, well, they've recently joined in the party, and here's uh, the Secretary General, Antonio Gutierrez. He's obviously looking to jump on the, uh, the windfall tax and advertising ban, indeed, for fossil fuels. Politicians, the, the, the theme is big, bad oil. Popular with voters, you don't win elections supporting oil and gas. Yet the coal industry, the lignite and peat burning industries, they're still mined and burned worldwide. They make far more emissions and far more, um, far less environmentally friendly. But um, no, no, they'll follow the money. And of course, the hypocrisy. This is the guy who sails around the world and uh, he's in limos and jets and flies from place to place. Pause the video. EU failing to meet targets. US behind the EU. So share the blame around, guys. We couldn't not mention this recent case that hit the headlines. Uh, So this is where Surrey Council challenged in the Supreme Court uh, on their decision to grant planning permission to UK Oil and Gas PLC. Now, this was to uh, develop a tiny, tiny little oil field, one time thought to be uh, ridiculously large. Uh, However, common sense has prevailed since. This action here, and you can see, well, the lawyer's pretty happy, isn't she? She's getting paid a lot of money. Yeah, so they're saying that the council should have considered the downstream downstream emissions. Well, you know, in that case, let's sue the coal-producing nations and companies. Let's look at car manufacturers. They're, they're implicated in the wanton burning of fossil fuels. Every airline, shipper, cement works. Let's shut down every gas-fired power station. Apply to all imports, including oil, uh, liquid and liquefied natural gas, etc. You know, meanwhile, the world demand for oil and gas just continues to rise. You and I, we're the consumers. And we recently did a video on the Energy Institute's uh, 2024 statistical review of world energy. And this is global oil production. Now, you can see oil production continues to go up, up, up. Bit of a dip here with COVID. But uh, by the 2023, you can see it's uh, actually back above pre-COVID levels, an all-time high. If you squint and look closely, that sky blue band in between the, uh, the green and the orange, that is the UK's contribution. Absolutely insignificant and falling. And in terms of gas, here's the uh, global gas production. Now, uh, if you look on here, the UK is in dark orange. Again, insignificant. Worldwide production goes up. We're going to have to be importing this from all over the world and paying the price to actually transport it to the UK. So, 
Who should you vote for? Well, I guess at the end of the day, there's more than just oil and gas issues uh, at stake in this election. So which of the parties is um, is helping the, uh, the North Sea industry? Well, none of them. Uh, it will take a radical change to save the industry. They're going to have to prepare for uh, far smaller UK gas re- tax revenues um, going forward and prepare to pay more money to overseas countries and companies for your petrol and gas. It's going to really hurt the balance of payments. Um, there's going to be a larger gas footprint because we have to pay for the energy to uh, to get that uh, to import that oil and gas. And it's uh, it really is all these parties have created a perfect lose lose situation. Perhaps the uh, Conservatives are the least bad of them all, but none of them are any good. On emissions concerns, don't lose sight that the UK production is insignificant on a global scale. And yet, perhaps we have quite high standards here of actually trying to reduce uh, emissions intensity, etc. Whereas in other parts of the world, we don't see the same compliance or uh, lack um, lack of flaring, for example. Slowly but surely, we're seeing the industry in the UK getting killed. It's, it's going to cost hundreds of thousands of jobs and all the associated tax revenues from all those people and all the supporting services in the towns where these people work. They're all going to be affected. It's a, it's a death knell for the UK economy. Oh, dear me. I'm on a cheery mood today, aren't I? Subscribe to the channel, leave some comments below, let us know what you think, and uh, by the end of the week we'll know who is the next government. Oh dear.